Good afternoon. I'm in Greece, Crete to be more precise. Now there are a lot of reasons a history buff could want to visit Greece. I mean, lots of things have happened here over the centuries, including the invention of democracy. Not that the Greeks have done anything particularly important since then. You can see the Acropolis and the fireworks over Acropolis on New Year's Eve is pretty cool, or you can come to Greece for the beaches and the sun and the surf and the warmth. Warmth. Unless you come in winter, and yesterday's snow really showed me this is not the place to come in winter if you want to be warm. So I have come to Crete, here, the Palace of Knossos. The Palace of Knossos is the home of the first European advanced civilization, the Minoans, named after King Minos. Now, even though there's been human habitation here since the Neolithic times, about 7000 BC, these palaces of the Minoan uh, culture were first built around about 2000, BC, making these ruins somewhere around about 4,000 years old. Now, in the year 1750, a big earthquake knocked a lot of the Minoan palaces around Crete over and they rebuilt. Then in about 1700 BC, Santorini's volcano erupted, arguably causing a huge tsunami and wiped out all of the coastal palaces and a lot of this place. So they rebuilt again only for it to be destroyed by fire about 1450 BC and that mysteriously sort of wiped out the Minoan culture and there's not much left of it other than these ruins here. By Greek legend the labyrinth was the place where the Minotaur was imprisoned and couldn't escape because of the complex series of turns and hidden pathways that would be needed to escape and perhaps that's why they thought that the palace at Knossos was the original labyrinth because imagine when fully built, it'd be hard to find your way out. And whilst you don't really see that with just the ruins, this wooden model shows you how large and complex Knossos was. And labyrinth derives from the word labir, which is the ancient Minoan word for double-headed axe. Now a double-headed axe was used a lot in symbolism and religious ceremonies back in the days of Gnosos. It was never used as a weapon or working tool. So next time you hear the expression labyrinth, you can think of Gnosos. Now, after the Minoans, the Mycenaeans and the Dorians came in here around about 1100 BC, and then Crete shrunk into little city-states, but didn't benefit from the huge cultural, artistic and scientific advances of mainland Greece, particularly the cities around Athens. Crete then became a little bit of a backwater. How much of a backwater? Well, even the Persians and Alexander the Great decided to bypass it. It really wasn't that important. The Arabs plonked here around about 800 AD and Crete kind of flourished underneath Byzantine rule. Crete was then given to the Venetians as a reward for providing the ships for the Fourth Crusade around about the year 1205 or thereabouts. And it's the Venetian architecture you can still see a lot of around towns like Hania and uh, Heraklion. You can also, when you look closely, see a whole bunch of old mosques and the remnants of the Islamic occupation of Crete. When the snow gently dusts the Lasithi Plains here, 900 metres above the sea, you can find these beautiful old windmills that used to have white sails left over from the Venetians who used the wind power to irrigate their lands. Another example of history. Of course, history in Greece goes back a lot more than the Venetians. Indeed, according to Greek legend, Rhea, when pregnant, was so pissed off at her husband, she pissed off to Greece to give birth to her son, the god Zeus, here in this cave. Cool cave, but still a pretty miserable place to give birth to a god. Now, if you're feeling a little bit sorry for Rhea that she had to give birth to her son god Zeus here in this cave, just feel sorry for Zeus. He had to give birth to Athena after an axe blow to his head and she came out from the gash. 
In 1898, with French agreement, Crete became a protectorate of the British, and then finally, after the Balkan Wars just before World War I, it was absorbed into mainland Greece. Crete then suffered horrendously during World War II, with Hitler bombing it quite strongly, and a lot of the Allied fighting near the end of World War II taking place here in Crete before extending into mainland Greece. Anyway, that's a quick tour of Crete. It is a pretty place. It's a nice place to come in summer. It is cold to come in winter, but it's got a lot of interesting history. So I'm now going to have another look around Knossos. <laughs>